Hi gang, Scott here. We're going to take a deeper look at AI Keyword. This is one of the new features in Photo Raw 2023. I've got my hands on a pre-release of the software so I can show you this feature you know, in, in real time, in live, you know, seeing this stuff work in action. Uh, I will say this is a pre-release of Photo Raw 2023. And so the final interface may end up looking a little bit different than what you see here because on one still tweaking things and finishing up the product, which will really release in October of 2023. I did a larger video about the major features coming out. You can check that out, link in the show notes there. And if you are considering adding Photo Raw to your toolkit, upgrading the version you have, you could support the channel here, support videos like this, use the link below in the show notes to make your purchase, and try using my offer code, SDP20. Uh, most folks are reporting that working for their purchases and upgrades, it'll save you 20% on the product. So let's have a look at AI keyword. AI keywords is part of browse. And when you're looking at photos in browse, you'll see this AI keywords section over there. If I highlight a photo, it becomes a lot more interesting. So AI keywords, these are things about this photo that photo raw detected on its own added these AI keywords, but distinct and separate from your other keywords basically giving you hints and saying, all right, I've looked at this image and I see a variety of things. Let me propose some keywords for you. Now, the cool thing about the AI keywords is they are searchable inside of Photo Raw. So if you're not really into keywording, but you know, you want to find photos of like all the flowers, I can just kind of do that at the bottom here, flower. And I have two photos that match that. Why? Both of them have this flower AI keyword on them. I didn't enter that in. Photo Raw figured that out based on the images there. And it's just immediately available in the searching. You know, any, uh, any search you want to do in Photo Raw and you'll pick up the AI keywords and find other photos faster. Now, if you like to have these keywords added more permanently to the photo, so something that would be exported with the photo, that's what these little arrows here are for. I could take that you know, flower thing, click it once, and now it's been added to the actual keywords metadata. This is like the IPTC metadata. So when I export this photo, that keyword flower that I've added, that'll be baked into the final JPEG or TIFF or what have you, and you know, go on with its life as a different image. That's important if you're doing stock photography or you know photos that need to be searchable by search engines on the internet to find things of interest. So uh, you can use it either way. It's like, I like the fact that AI keyword is quite flexible. You have the uh, the ability to search for it in Photo Raw. So if you never want to have anything to do with keywords, but you like finding your images fast, you're going to love AI keyword. If you go that one step further and you want keywords to be added to photos, pushed out when you export things, you've got that there. And if you already have a keyword hierarchy set up, AI keyword is not going to go in and stomp all over it. So that's kind of cool. Um, that's kind of the quick tour of keyword AI. Let's take a look at the preferences for keyword AI so you can understand how it's uh, finding things. And then I want to show you a few other uh, like deeper cuts about AI keyword to show you some, some, some areas that you might not think of right away. Let's get up to the preferences here in Photo Raw and we have a keyword AI tab. This is where you control how AI keywords get discovered, get added to your photo. And you have all the controls here, but running them down, you've got a big you know, master control. You know, Don't scan my catalog folders or scan them. So you have that, yeah, I don't want this feature at all. Go ahead and turn it off. What will it scan? A bunch of stuff. GPS, yeah, that in and of itself is uh, very fast. That's one of the fastest things I've noticed with AI keyword makes sense, right? If you've put a GPS marker on your photo or it's an iPhone photo or a mobile phone where you've got that GPS info, it's going to find the location very quickly with a, with a simple lookup. Other things that are um, a little more um, 
in need of explanation. Photographic properties, that's the property of the photo itself insofar as I hover over that you'll see things like the filters that might have been used on the photo if you've processed it. Uh, maybe the class of the camera, the lens is the exposure, you know, um, overexposed, underexposed, things like that. On the right hand side, you have histogram properties. That's kind of the tonal qualities of the image. Is it high contrast, low contrast? Uh, not one of the things you think that would be part of keyword AI right away, but it is there. Uh, colors, you saw in the, the flower photos, and you know, I got colors here, it's vivid, that type of stuff. You can find faces in the photo. You can have the age estimated, so children versus adults. Uh, you can estimate the gender, that's turned off by default. Detect objects in regions, that is uh, kind of the, the, the bigger power of the keyword AI. That's what's going to detect things like flower or man-made ground or buildings or you know people. I've seen it detect some things with clothing, uh, bicycles, architecture, all of those types of objects and elements we would have in a photo. And then finally, folder names. Uh, that's a more of a, like a hint, I'd say, to, to keyword AI where the folder that you have things stored in can become you know an extra hint to the, the the algorithms and it can add certain keywords based on what folder you've put it in so you've got some folder uh, organization there you can get a little keywording for free and if you're a cloud sync user you can take all these results and make sure they're synced across the uh, you know all your computers Let's move into what things does keyword AI do very well with, and then we'll talk about some things where there is some room for improvement. So things it does very well with. GPS, already mentioned that in the previous section of this video. You've got a GPS tag on there. You're gonna get some uh, location keywords for free, basically. It also does very well with uh, prominent subjects in the photo. You have a photo with a clear, uh, concise subject, you're going to get some pretty rich keywords from that. It also does very well with photos of people. And that can be you know, a person standing in a landscape or it can be you know, a classic portrait. You get some very good information out of keyword AI on that. I wanna show you this one example here that you know, kind of you know, drove this home for me. I'll show you a couple really. So here's this bicycle. Okay, great, I expected it to pick up bicycle. That, you know, it's, it's obvious. But it also added rim, bicycle wheel, spoke, Spoke was the one that really made me go, wow, okay, there's, um, there's some you know, additional smarts going on here. You figured out there was a bicycle here. Right? You figured out there's wheels here. You go ahead and add spoke. I mean, these are a, a lot of things that I wouldn't necessarily add uh, as a person typing in keywords to this photo. Keyword AI did that for me. Uh, here's another one. You know, got a person taking photos at a river. It picked up things I would expect, body of water, natural environment. And then look at some of the things about the you know the human element, outerwear, shoe, clothing. That was surprising to me. I wasn't expecting the the AI to piece it together and say, okay, this is a person in a landscape and they're they're wearing a jacket, so that's outerwear. Stuff like that. Um, it's it's powerful and it, it's quite intriguing. Now on the opposite side of that coin, there are some things that I was surprised didn't get picked up right away by keyword AI. So those are worth highlighting too. And um, I'm hopeful that as the AI gets smarter and smarter, these gaps will be closed. So this is kind of a classic photo. We'll take, you know, a long road leading off to the horizon. And there isn't a road keyword. That surprised me. And I've hit that scan button over here a couple of times where, you know, you say, you know, kick off scan, have it start doing something. You'll see that scan job pop up at the lower right corner while it does some scanning there. All right, it's picking up a couple of other things, but I've done this a few times and it didn't get road. I mean, that one was, was quite surprising. It just didn't pick that one up. Here's another one taken in foggy conditions and, and fog didn't get picked up. Uh, it didn't even really pick up like rock. Uh, ocean, I could kind of understand it might not get that uh, because there's so much, you know, just, just whiteness in this photo. Uh, you know, it did get the things like high key and muted and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, I, I thought I would have seen fog in there. Uh, one more example. 
this scene here with reflections. I didn't get a reflection keyword. And I know that Sky AI, which has been in Photo Raw since 2022, that has smarts to detect reflections in bodies of water. I guess that hasn't quite percolated into keyword AI. Uh, you know, maybe this is not the best photo for it. It's not really a sky in the photo, but I would have expected to see reflection show up in there. So there, there are some spots that are room for improvement here. Uh, there are a couple of other surprises too. Some some things that I thought were um, one one really was was delightful. Another was kind of made me scratch my head. Let me show you those. The first one that I, I just found very delightful is multilingual support in the AI keywords. Notice the kanji over there, right? It, you know, this was, photo was taken in Japan, and I'm not quite sure what that says, but it certainly recognized the photo is from Japan, and it added a multilingual keyword. Uh, if anyone out there is watching this that, that speaks or reads Japanese, let me know what that says. I'm curious if it just says something like Japan, or if it says something a little deeper about the photo. Um, one other, um, this one is more like a quirky surprise that I found in Keyword AI. You know, returning to this image, one of the keywords is photograph. Aren't they all? I don't know if this is a, a, a typo and it's supposed to be photographer, like they could figure that out, but I have seen this photograph keyword on other photos that did not have a photographer in them. So that one, I'm not quite sure what the AI is thinking there. So, uh, so that's kind of the, um, the, the, the what's good, what needs improvement, a couple of surprises in Keyword AI. There's one other aspect of Keyword AI that you might not think of immediately, and that is it is per version. So if you're using versions to manage your photos, because you might want to style things in one way or another, like a you know black and white photo, you know treatment for this photo, and this color treatment for the same photo, well, the AI keywords apply individually to each version. And when I first noticed that, I was like, hmm, that's kind of odd. Why wouldn't it just bring the keywords over? And then I realized. It's because of the difference in processing. And let me just show you by example what I'm talking about here. So we'll return to our bicycle photo here and recall it had some pretty rich keywords about rim and spoke and wheel. Let me create a version of that. Right hour over to the version. Notice the AI keywords are just the GPS. I mentioned before, GPS is very, very fast for the keywords. That happens almost immediately. Now the scanning on this is gonna continue in the background. Let's say I made a version here because I want to do some kind of treatment on it. Let's, uh, let's just make it a, a black and white. Okay, and let's say I wanna do a little bit more to it. We'll bring it into the develop module. We'll hit auto on it, brighten it up. And say I really want to go for like a full kind of a higher key kind of look here. So we'll we'll take that those brights up really high and or a heavier contrast. I shouldn't say high key, but a heavier contrast. I do something like that. Okay, and we'll go back into browse. Now some of those keywords have already caught up. Let's scan this. Uh, actually, I don't even have to scan it again. It, look at it, caught it already. Monochrome, right? So that's a new keyword that's been added, and it's based on the processing. So this is why the AI keywords not only are just like the original image, but if you create versions of it, you're going to get different sets of those AI keywords based on the processing. I thought that was a nice attention to detail from On1 because it does make sense. Later on, I'm looking for monochrome images. I want to find those ones that I've you know, processed and treated in a certain way. So I thought that was really cool. Uh, and I think that's gonna bring this to the end here of, uh, of Keyword AI. I hope this gives you a deeper feel for what this feature is is going to bring you in Photo Raw 2023. Other questions, go ahead and drop them below. I'll do my very best to answer. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.